Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make a card and we are going to do some coloring. I'm going to be using these new to me markers. These are by Color It. And I'll show you the box here. They are a company that does adult coloring books. They also have colored pencils. And they just came out with a set of 50 markers in a really nice case. And this is what the box looks like that they come in. Um, you could save this as a reference, but I really recommend that you do what I did. And what I did here was... I took a piece of cardstock that I normally use for coloring, which is the uh, Nina 80 pound solar white classic crest cardstock, because I just like the way they blend and stuff. So what I did was I cut a piece of cardstock to fit in the top of my case here, and um, I swatched out all the colors so I could see. Now, if you look here, the colors are actually pretty close to, um, to what the ends of the markers say they are, but it's always a good idea to have them swatched out, just because you will notice like, this um, light orange, the color itself is a little bit darker than the color on the cap. Um, they're all pretty darn close, but there'll be a couple that are just, you know, just slightly off just because of what the limitations are with dyeing plastics and um, and when you're, you know, coloring on paper. Colors tend to be darker on paper too, so I just like to make sure I, um, I have that. Like that VB6, it's quite a bit darker than the cap. And uh, I think that's, oh, and the, the espresso, that's much darker than what the cap shows, but most of them are pretty good. Um, I like this case because if you look in there, you'll see there's kind of like a grid and that keeps the markers upright. And I just put these back in the same way so I can just look at my um, my little swatch really well. This video is sponsored by Color It and I'll put a link in the video description so you can get these markers if you want. They retail for $100, but I do have a 10% off coupon in the video description as well. There's a couple little straps here. Oh, and that comes with the case and everything. Um, so if you want to put like a couple pens or just something in there you could or you could trim your swatch down a little bit to go under those straps but I just set it in there that way I can see it while I'm coloring um, so yeah I'm really impressed with these and we're gonna do some coloring today so what I did first was I took one of their coloring books and I wanted to make my own pattern paper for this card so I just kind of put a ruler down and took about two inches of this design and just colored it because I knew I wasn't gonna use a whole page so I figured I would just color what I'm gonna use and then I stamped out some big flower stamps and these are by Stampendous let me look at the set what's that called um, I'll take a peek here so you can see it's called clean daisy mix in case you're looking for those stamps um, because I thought they'd be really fun to do some coloring techniques with you. Another cool thing about these markers is that they are permanent, they're alcohol based, they have very little odor, but the nice thing is that you can dye your um, your embellishments to match. So I like to buy like silk flowers and ribbons and stuff like that in white and all you have to do is color it and um, with the markers and you can make it match whatever you're working on, whatever your project is. So it's just a great use for any alcohol markers you have and I'm going to show you these in action in case you've been looking for a set. Um, and I will zip this up just so you can see. I love, 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 love this case. And I can lay it flat for storage so I can have my markers um, evenly inked on each end. I always keep my double-ended markers flat like that. So uh, just a little tip there. Let's get into the coloring. I colored a little bit here just so you can kind of see. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can um, you can see more detail. I like to work with a pad or something underneath uh, stamping and where I'm coloring because you can see where I did that really bright purple flower. It leaked through a little bit, so you want to protect your work surface, especially if you're working on a nice table. So I think we're going to first do this daisy here. It's a really easy one to color. And we're going to start off with... Um, with ER5, which is kind of like an earthy red five. It's a very warm brown. And I'm gonna use, there's two ends. You got a, a uh, chisel tip, which is good for large areas and backgrounds. And then you've got the bullet tip, which is good for doing your coloring, your stamping coloring. And I'm gonna start by dabbing the color into the darker areas. Basically, I'm putting this into the areas where they've got a little bit of indication that there might be some shadow. And I'm doing a dabbing stroke so that I will get that texture in there a little bit. All right, now the next color I'm going to go to, and I'm going to put this right back so that I can always look at my swatch. I can always look up at my swatch and see that I exactly where every marker is so I don't have to think too much about it while I'm working. Oh, and the bullet ends have a gray stripe so you know which end is, uh, is the gray one. Now I'm going to go in with this mustardy color. It's DY5, and I am just going to color over that color over any of the darker browns that I put in there. I'm just using little circular motions here. And so this is kind of like my mid-tone here. 
And then I'm going to go in with a lighter yellow. I think I'll do DY3. And these colors blend really well with each other. For only 50 colors, I do feel like I've got a really good um, set that I could carry with me and not feel like I was missing much. You know, if I was taking it to a scrapbooking crop or something like that, um, I feel like I would have plenty of colors. And of course, if you wanted it brighter, you could do like a, a Y3, which is a little bit brighter of a color. And sometimes I'll use a chisel edge. If I want to lighten up a color, I'll go in there and just uh, go in with that chisel edge. It seems to push the other pigment pigments around a little bit more and then I can brighten it up that way But it's either way. It's pretty now for the petals since this is the white daisy We actually have to kind of just color the shadows and what I'm going to use for that is CG1 And this is a really light gray and I'm going to start with a bullet tip and I'm going to go in Especially on those petals that are in behind and also where the petals just kind of meet the uh, center and I'm just flicking out not very much color so if I see that a color, like a petal is overlapped, like that one's kind of on top of that one and that one, I'm going to put, make sure I put a little bit more color on that edge of the petal underneath, just so it looks a little dimensional. I'm just going to go around, do this to every petal. And then I'm, when I'm done this, I'm going to go in with a super, super light blue, a TB1. And this is just called pale blue. And I'm going to go over. The, just like we did with the yellow, I'm going to go over the gray and just flick it a little bit beyond them that and it's just going to give me a, just a cool shadow basically to um, to these white petals. Now, I encourage you to use whatever markers you have, okay? Um, of course, Color is a sponsor of this video and I do love these markers and I love the case they come in and if you don't have markers already, they're a great way to get started. It's a steal, especially with that case. Um, and the quality is really good on these, but if you already have markers, go ahead and use the markers that you have as always. Feel free to turn your design as you're working. You want to be comfortable when you're coloring and you're going to get a less awkward line if you move your paper while you go. All right, and that's all there is to that. That's pretty darn easy, don't you think? Now, um, I wouldn't have to be so precise on my coloring if I know I'm going to cut around closely onto these petals, so that's something to think about. If you're coloring something really dark and you know you're going to cut it out, you can be kind of sloppy with it. Another technique I want to share with you is working from light to dark, and this is really useful if you have paper that doesn't blend very well or um, you're using office supply store paper. Sometimes it's all we have access to, and sometimes it doesn't blend as well as our nicer uh, stamping cards stocks. So what you want to do is pick a couple colors that are, um, you know, all shades of green or, you know, that you all want to represent in your leaves. And I'm using GY3, which is a really pale, um, pale yellow green kind of color. And you want to coat your leaf with a good um, layer of that. So it's also known as priming the leaf. Now, if you're working on um, paper that, that tends to feather, you just want to go within the lines just a, just a touch so it doesn't um, blend out with all the ink that we're going to put down. So then next you're going to go in with your mid color. And this I have GY7, which is um, green yellow. And I'm going to go in and lay that right on top. And I'm going to kind of do that same flicking feathering motion that I did on the daisy petals, the white daisy petals. And I'm not quite bringing it out to the edge. I'm just kind of gently laying in that color. Don't worry, it's not going to look blended yet, so, so don't worry about that. Now we're going to go in with our darker green. This is G7. Um, it's called olive green. It's kind of like a sap green kind of color. And I'm going to go in with my veining. And I'm also going to go in with a little bit of shading towards the bottom of my leaf. I know you're seeing it, it's upside down. I had to turn my paper around so that it would be nice and big on screen for you. Then once I feel like I have enough of that color represented, I'm going to go back into my second color. And this is also really useful, like if your colors have a pretty big jump between them. So um, like maybe you don't have, like we're using GY7, G7, and GY3. So there are pretty big jumps. We don't have like a five and a six together so there is a little bit of a difference in value. Um, this helps in that situation as well because you don't have to have every marker in the world to get this effect. And then finally I'm going over again with my lightest color, uh, coloring over the lights again and then coloring it right into the um, 
medium tones and you can even go into the dark tones with this but as it dries it gives you a much nicer transition um, as opposed to going dark to light like we did on the yellow center of the daisy now that one right there I did starting with dark medium and light and that was it and it looks all right but I didn't get the blending that I have um, over on these other leaves that I did on the method I just showed you now uh, dark to light works really well especially if you don't have huge jumps between colors and we're gonna do this next one like that I'm using OR5 which is kind of like a light coral and PP2 which is kind of like a blush kind of pink color they're very similar as you can see on the marker caps there and they're, they're quite accurate uh, so I'm gonna go in with my darker one and this one's just gonna be two colors and I'm gonna go around and put in the darker color on each of these petals now this is uh, even though sometimes reds can be difficult to bl reds and pink sometimes are difficult to blend um, I find these uh, pinkish oranges to be alright to blend so I'm going in and putting in the darks on each petal if you're doing like a red or a purple or something that's really tough to blend you want to go one petal at a time because it will just give you a little more time to blend now I'm going in with my lighter color I'm going all over it I'm doing the whole petal okay so it can totally blend in with that ink and I'm gonna go around and do each one of these okay and don't forget you can per you can push a little bit if you need to for the ink um, I find that I didn't really have to push it blended pretty well on its own now if you decide you wanted something with a little bit more punch you could go in with a darker pink like if I take this uh, PP5 I could go in and I could kind of make a ring like I did on this one I made this kind of like pink ring it just kind of punches up the color a little bit and I'm just going in and dabbing on dabbing right around that ring I think I might actually, you know what? I need a darker color. That's that was uh that's PP3. I need PP5. That one's too. I said PP. I know that's <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh when I do that. Um and I'm just going to dab around here on the circle and then you get that pretty two tone effect. The center of this flower is done the exact same way as we did the other daisy. We're going to start off with our brown um and get into our shadow areas if you think that's too dark you don't have to use a brown you could start off with that kind of mustardy yellow I'm just gonna put a little bit in there because I like the definition I love that they have that little um, bar of gray on the ends that have the um, the bullet tip because it's really easy to identify this set does not have a clear blender but you can use whatever you have for a clear blender or you can pick one up um, at any art supply store they all carry those uh, clear alcohol ink blenders there's probably some colors that are light enough in this kit that you could like this oh EN1 is a really really light color I could use that for kind of like the highlight on this or to tone down if I had too bright of a yellow that would kind of neutralize it a little bit but you can see that is really easy to do now I don't think I want to do this one um, I wasn't really happy with the color that the way it came out um, but I do want to share the technique that I did for the petals here because I think it's kind of uh, it's kind of nice to know so what I'm going to do is I'll just draw a petal out here with this marker and kind of show you how I did it and this is another technique um, like if you maybe you just have um, two colors and you're working with a really dark color you can do the petal with your darkest color and then you can go in with a much lighter color um, I think I used VB2 on this and you can color wherever you want your highlight and this lighter ink is going to push the darker ink out to the side and then you'll end up with kind of a highlight I'm hoping this shows up on camera all right because it is a very vivid color but you can see how it's lighter in the center and kind of rounded where I put the uh, the light color over the dark color there and it because it because it pushes the same thing as if you went out of the lines and you had a clear blender you could kind of erase that color back into the uh, stamped image which is kind of a fun technique so I think though since I do have this one stamped out again I would do this in like maybe some shades of blue so I do have a few blues here let's try these dark ones because I haven't used these much in the set um, I'm not sure if this will make it onto the final card or not because I didn't use it in my background uh, example but I think it'd be fun to do just the same so let's try let's compare those two techniques I showed you for coloring let's first do the dark to light um, I'll start off with this dark it's b12 midnight blue it's a super super dark kind of navy color so I'll get that in there first and I think I'm gonna go petal to petal because these colors are really dark and your darker colors tend to need a little bit more help blending I'm going over it with my cobalt blue oh that's a pretty color isn't it 
Another thing I want to mention is if you go a little crazy and get it a little too dark, you can always use colored pencils and lighten some areas up. And now I'm going in with this lighter blue, and I think I'm going to go over the entire petal with that because it wants to push my ink around. Oh, that's pretty. You know what? I think I'm going to use this on my card. That is light blue. So do that to each of those petals and you'll have a really pretty flower. Why don't we try that other technique, the light to dark technique while we're at it. So if we started off by coloring with this lightest color and filled it in, these markers are brand new, so they're super juicy. And then go into my medium color, same colors I was just using. This way we can kind of compare the techniques. And then we'll go in with our darkest. I feel like I'm over flooding it because it's so, because the markers are so juicy. And then we'll go with our medium again, right at the edges. I don't know if I really need to go in that medium again. And then we'll go in with our lightest again. I really don't see on this color much, much benefit to doing it that way. It takes longer, it takes twice as much ink. Um, and it's saturating the paper either way, either way we do it. So I think I prefer doing the regular way. Um, if you work really quick, you can jump and do like a few of the dark blue areas and then go in with the medium blue and then the light. So that is once you get to be a quicker colorist, you can do that and that does save a little bit of time. I just wanted to make sure I, uh, I showed you the light to dark on that because I think I mentioned that I was going to, but then, um, but then I forgot. So I wanted to make sure I, I did share that with you. So, so you can jump a little bit here. This medium blue seems to be out of the three of those colors, the one that wants to stain the most. So you'll see here that that edge is hard to get rid of. So you do have to work it a little bit or just do them one, one at a time, whatever you're more comfortable with. But I don't think working light to dark is, you know, is worth the extra effort on this. I think it looks just as good. So you can see how skipping around, I did have a little bit of an edge um, where the medium blue met the darker one. Actually, I was able to get rid of it uh, right there. But if I do it one at a time, if I just do like one of this little petal right here by itself, it's a little bit, blends a little bit easier. And it's just because that edge of ink is just staying completely wet. I do like how easily the caps come on and off. And I have to say, I was using these yesterday and I didn't get a cap all the way on. And I went back to it today and it was fine. I think these might be my uh, my travel set of markers because I feel like I have enough to, uh, to really do everything I wanna do. For the center of this flower, I think I will do, um, I think I'll do some orange. I think I will do this kind of darker orange. Let's, we can always add some brown to it if it's too bright, but I thought blue and orange would just be really vibrant together and be pretty. So I'm going to go in and add that uh, bright orange to that shadowy area. Then I'm going to go in with this yellow orange, which is just a really nice, bright, cheerful color. And that does seem a little bright to me, so I think I'm going to go in with this um, brownish orangey color. This uh, We used it on the other centers and just kind of tap it in and that's going to give me some nice shadow and make it look a little bit more natural. All right, well we have got a bunch of different leaves and flowers colored at this stage so I'm going to go cut these out and then we'll be all set to make our card. Another thing I wanted to show you was how to tint an embellishment. So I've got this, uh, I'm just going to fold this in half so I don't uh, stain the sheet underneath and uh, just take any silk flower that you have. This is going to go actually go through the flower so you don't have to color both sides even if you can see both sides but I just basically hold it on one edge and just color away from the center and then you can alter any of your white silk flowers or light colored flowers. You can also do ribbons, um, you can do buttons, although buttons sometimes are a little streaky because they are um, uh, because they're so slick, but I also do like those little, um, from the, there's these little like clear dew drops that come from the um, floral section of the craft store. I like to use those. They work really well. And it's just a fun way that you can use your markers another way. Okay, we have our supplies all handy and ready to go. And this is the panel I cut from that coloring page that I showed you that I colored. I want you to see the back because when you are coloring with alcohol markers, they're gonna seep through and um, kind of how they soak through is why they blend so well because you always have that kind of wet ink in the paper um, that your new ink that you put on top 
goes into. I know that sounds so scientific. But anyway, don't fret. It's going to look like that on the back of your coloring sheet. That's why the coloring books have like a uh, blotter sheet with them. It's like on the first page and you can just put that in between your, um, your sheets of paper so that you don't bleed onto the next sheet in your book. So it's, it's uh, quite handy that way. So I've just trimmed that to the same length of my card. And the cool thing is you can use the same colors that you're going to use for your coloring of your um, images and you have a perfectly matched pattern paper. And I like how they have a lot of designs in their coloring books that make really nice um, scrapbooking and card making paper. So then I'm thinking that it would be cool to kind of um, maybe just make like a uh, cluster of these flowers. I don't know if I'm going to use them all because I have so many, but I like how they look on the black and I like kind of how they overlap the um the pattern a little bit I did make a little mistake when I was cutting out this one and I had to put the die back on and cut it again so this one you'll see is not the exact same size as that one even though they were the same stamp just because of the way that it that I cut out I thought it was kind of funny I actually laughed when I did it and do I want that other one I love the way this flower is colored but I think it might just be too much for this card to have both of them on there And I've got these cute leaves. Uh, I think I might put this other one up here because I don't like to have an even number because I had four flowers. This will give it five and make it a little bit, a little bit more um, appealing to the eye, I think. And I also don't want to cover up too much of my beautiful paper that I spent so much time coloring. Actually, I didn't take that much time to color the, uh, the uh, paper, but still, since I did it, I want it to show. I really like the way my leaves came out. Okay, so I think I'm going to use some um, foam adhesive to stick those down. I have this right here. And I also have, you know what, I think I'll use hot glue for the, uh, the ones that I want to be a little bit flatter and use foam adhesive for the others. So I'm just going to try to remove these and glue them down individually here. So I'm thinking if I can sneak that under. So anything that's kind of like a lower layer, I'm going to do with a hot glue. You can really see how that ink um, goes all the way through the paper, and that's how you get that lovely blend. Oops, I don't think I want that glued down yet, so I'm just pulling that out a little bit. Um, and this one, I think I might also do with a glue, because you can actually get a little dimension with the glue. I can kind of curl it up and also the glue if you let the glue set on the embellishment for a bit before you push it down you'll get a little bit of a of a dimension now I think I'll switch over to my foam put a few of those on the back you can use any brand these happen to be just be leftovers from a 3d puzzle that my kids had been doing and they're like the best foam squares they never seem to uh, they never seem to let loose I also want to put my little flower here that we colored with the um, with the markers. I think I don't, actually, you know what? I don't think I like that there so much now that I now that I'm just looking at these. I think I really just like the way my colored ones looked. So I think I'll probably save that for another project. But that's okay. You totally you can totally do that. You don't have to put every like I'm not putting everything I colored on here just because I colored it. You know, you've got to make that decision. Sometimes when you add more, it just detracts away from everything else you've done. So you have to kind of have to kind of weigh that and decide if it's going to make your project nicer or if it's just going to add noise to it. Kind of like that there. Remember, move it around because once you glue it down, you're not moving it. Yeah, we'll put that other leaf in there. I like I like more leaves. I always think that looks good. Now this could be used as a happy birthday or get well soon or any different kind of thinking of you type of card. And then sometimes what I'll do if I have like an extra um, flower is that I'll put it on the inside. And I think I'm going to find a light colored panel that I can put on the inside so I'll have a nice place to write. 
I looked through my scrap bins and I found this light pink cardstock, which I think will be pretty and definitely light enough to write on. Uh, you can use a pattern paper as well. Just make sure the pattern is not too, um, you know, too bold that you can't write on it. And sometimes what I've been known to do is just use a uh, post-it note and um, write my message on a post-it note so that way the person if they want to they can reuse the card uh, to re-gift to somebody else and I think that's a great way to recycle because not everybody keeps their cards and I am going to use a little bit of hot glue for that because it's not too thick I don't want the inside of my card to um, to be raised up so I can press it down pretty well and um, and there you go what a cheerful card it's so bright and fun and even though we use these crazy patterns and then put flowers on top I don't feel like it's too busy I think it really pops um, if you did want to put a sentiment on the front, you could always do like a little banner and um, and kind of bend it and glue it on top. That would be pretty, or just leave it at it as is because I think that's pretty too. The markers that I use are from Color It. I'm really impressed with these as I was really impressed with their coloring books when they first came out. Um, they have a lot of really wonderful designs and the paper in their coloring books. And um, I just want to show you here. The paper is a beautiful gloss and my kids have actually colored quite a few, started quite a few things in here. You can see they do well with like felt, felt tip pens. They do well with um, uh, colored pencils and really well with the alcohol markers. I really, really think you should give these a try. And the other thing I like is that say if you don't like a pattern on there, you can use the back side and it's beautiful for, uh, for coloring and stamping and drawing on because it's just got this beautiful semi gloss. Um, smooth smooth texture that is so nice for any alcohol markers but if you are in the mood for you're in the mood if you're in the mood or the market for alcohol pens I do recommend these color it markers um, I was very uh, pleasantly I won't say surprised because I knew they do high quality stuff but I was very happy with how nice they are in this really great case that they come in super sturdy and um, they all stand upright so I can see exactly what I have and they're flat so I can lay the case on its side for storage and not have to worry about my markers getting um, dry out on one end or the other if you found this helpful please give me a thumbs up if you um, would like to see more coloring tutorials let me know in the comments below and if you like this video share it with a friend that helps my channel grow and I really really appreciate it thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting